All right, everybody, welcome to The Way I Did It. This is uh, Repair Your Beetle Day. So here, I want to show you what happened. Here's the bottom of my cup holder. As you can see, this one overlaps that cup holder. So it, it couldn't go all the way down because the cup was in there. So it went all the way down to the top of the cup. And then an elbow put on there, poof, pushed that straight down, popped it loose. So I need to be able to get to that to fix it. That's what that's the goal of today. So warning, don't put anything in there that won't fit under this in a latched position. Think so pop the hood. I'm gonna disconnect the battery and even though that looks a little bit red, right there is the negative symbol. We're going to disconnect the negative portion of the battery. Using a 10 millimeter socket to do that. To get the front seat out, it's a serrated or splined bit. It's M10 for the rail tracks. Rail tracks got to come out with the seat. They're integrated into the seat. Two up front, one, two. Move the seat all the way forward and then you can get to the other two. There's one, there's two. After I got the rear bolts out, I moved the seat to the rear again. And on most cars, you'd have to undo all that, but we're not gonna do that. On this car, here's all your connectors. We're, we're going to undo these. This little block right here, is holding the peg on the back side. You just have to lift it up and then you can pull a connector out. Turn on my flash, you can see this a little bit better. Let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about here so you, you know how to do it. I'm trying to do it by looking in this camera so my depth perception is off. You take this and you lift it up that direction. Oh, slipped off a little bit. Take it, move it up that way. It releases it, you can pull that connector right out quite easily. Looks like the next connector has a safety latch. And in general, you have to pull these out. So it pops up. Then you can press this down. And that should come right out. Bing. And then this one. Just pull that up. Pull that off. Oh, and then this one's in a weird spot pull that down pull this out oh I have to use two hands but, that, but you see how to do it so once you get all those connected pull them out of the way grab the seat pull it out and there that seat is out now you see why I wanted it out I wanted to get to all that so I can vacuum that out plus I want to be able to get to that middle console so we can fix that problem we got to get the passenger seat we're going to start in the back, get the rear bolts. Take the rear back bolts out, took the front bolts out. Now here we are again with a harness to take loose. Same process. All right, this connector is a little different than the other side. Had to use the two hands to get that. Got to put, just pull that up like I was doing and it'll come loose. All right, time to pull the seat out. After this harness is actually anchored, this harness is actually anchored right here. So I gotta pull that anchor out and then we can pull the seat out. All right, there you go. Both the seats out, now we can try to conquer the middle console. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I use my tool, get under here, pry that off. Comes out relatively easy. We're going to take the nut off using a 16 millimeter socket. Nut is off. One more thing to do, I believe. There. There's a Phillips screw right there. All right, we got the screw out. Then we can lift that right up out of there. That's just my two cents worth. 
All right, I always like to put fasteners back where I took them out. That way they're there when I need them. So we're going to take these two torques and this nut loose. All right, there's the nut. Used a 13 millimeter socket, and this was a T30 bit to get these two, bolt, two uh, bolts out. Now, take this out. Oh, two hands. Just pry it open. There's a harness, a wiring harness, right here. Disconnect your connector. There's a little clip on the back. All right, you've got it loose. Good. Pause this. It's got two wires. We got to take loose two connectors here. One's got arms on each side here. Got an arm. You take that loose. And the bottom one had the one side you have to push it down right there you can pull those out once i got the face plates loose and this popped up i did have to temporarily disconnect or reconnect the battery put pull this back down into a lower gear all right and we'll pop this off yeah that popped right off This thing is on this shaft, and you have to pull it off. So basically what you got to do is, when you activate the trigger, it pulls this shaft up. And you got to take that linkage off. So what I do is, activate that, and then pull it back. There you go. That's off. Popped it off. You lift this up. And there is a ring here, retaining ring, that keeps the detent that's part of the plastic into the detent that's part of the metal shaft. Pull that ring loose and it won't hold it in there anymore. And you don't have to try to yank on this like crazy. It'll just come right off. We're going to do that. Just work it until you can get it loose. Yeah, that was the detent. It's got a ring that sits down in there. That's what's holding that on. That ring is holding it on. I got that ring down at the bottom now. This whole thing has to come off. So we'll start with these two screws here. These two screws right here are T20s. There's one. There's the other. Now that you got those screws off, we'll use our just pull it out. Pry it up underneath the old bottom until it just kind of popped off. So there's the one for the 12 volt receptacle. And one for the engine start. Here's the connector for the engine start. It's hard, it comes out horizontally. Got the harness loose. After the harness is loose though, there ain't much holding this in. That thing doesn't snap real tightly in there. So my start button falls out. The uh, connector for the 12 volt courtesy receptacle. Push it in. Pull it out. All right, now that the cover's off, there are four screws holding this in. One, two, three, four. Take those out, and this unit right here will come off, come out. But it does have four little fingers on the side that you got to get by. I'll show them to you later. All right, I got that out. Got those loose. Now you can work them 
pulling this out just far enough to look back in there. You have to extend these into this position. Prior to that, they're right up against this. Once you do that, you push this clip down. Once that's extended, you can flex that. This one and this one are the same. This one just has those two little ears on the side. You have to push those in to get those out. If you've got one of these, this is what I used. I went back behind it and picked it up. And that's what popped that out. So you pop that ball out. This part here, the cam, the small part is pushed down in between there flexes this back and sits under that and that hook holds it in meanwhile to pull it out the ball when I removed the ball was about here at my fingertip needed to be pushed back into the cable past this hook or loop so that when it when I pulled it out, because I got it partially out, well, I got it all the way out, but I still couldn't pull it free because the cable was hitting this loop here. And the cable's pretty rigid, so it would not let it come out. Once I pushed the ball in past this, I was able to pull that out, which is about that far. So that's how I got the climate control module cable out. This little red plug here clips into this module here so when you reinstall it this needs to be reconnected so to get this loose from here what I did was slide my pry tool up and pulled up on this and pulled them off of this Pulled up on this and pulled them off of this. The last obstacle is the handbrake. To get the boot up, I just used my pry tool and it came up relatively easy. Started on the long side here on the outside and then lifted it up. Once you pry that boot up, you got to push it down in the hole. The back side is where it's squared. It's difficult to get down because of this lip, but if you go for, pull this back a little bit that lip ends and then you can push it right down there then you can lift this rear up all right got this up now it's far enough up i can reach underneath here and disconnect that 12 volt connection tree i'm going to show you this connector to pull it out just push down on the clip all right got that off now we can try to manipulate this to get it up. All right, there we go. Got it off. The key to getting it past this is pull this up until it hits its stop. Pull it up so you can't get it any higher, and then you can slide it up. So there we go. What I need to fix now is my cup holder. I've only got, I thought I had two, but I only have one clip left. So there's nothing holding this on. The cup holder is supposed to be like that. So the question is, what do I want to do to fix that? Or do I want to order a new one of these? What I've done is I've heated pieces of paper clips with my soldering iron and embedded, embedded them into the plastic. And now I'm going to add epoxy around the perimeter here to retain that strength. All right, so we're going to apply epoxy. All right, I put epoxy over the whole thing. It runs down over your rubber band. It's no big deal. It's just ran around there to make these uh, four retaining clips that steadies a smaller cup inside of this. It runs around there just to make these appear to be spring loaded so if these quit springing your rubber band has broke i don't know if you can get one of those but uh good good luck the thing that you have to watch here is 
you got to make sure that these retainers in each cup holder after the epoxy or while the epoxy is drying is free now, before we put it in I thought I'd just give you a look at what the repair job looks like from the inside it looks look stock can't even tell I did anything to it it's a good deal that's how we want it alright I vacuumed the car out got it halfway clean I'm going to put the console back in the first thing that we've got to do is put the part braking handle back up inside here alright to prep for this I put the harnesses all three of them around the gear shifter that way they don't get lost and I don't have to look for them slide that right over there got that in slid this up all the way it's not connected yet but before we do we need to remember to connect our connector here all right before we set the middle console down we want to get the boot for the brake lever Back up on top all right so what i've done is i've reached up underneath there and i pushed it up in front of the two pieces here the two little flanges that only extend that far so we it needs to go up in front of those this rear piece does because the rear piece is square it won't come up and it won't flex enough to go in between those so we'll pull it up as we put the uh, middle console in place. Let me see if I can do that while videoing. Maybe not. There we go. And as it comes down, we just kind of pull it up. What I'm doing is I'm trying to twist it a little bit sideways and pull it up. It's got a stiff piece of plastic in here, flexible plastic, that keeps that boot tucked in when this goes up and down. So be a little careful so you don't rip anything when you're pulling that up and down. All right, got the boot up there, got it seated down. Now we need to move it forward into position. You can see the gap here. We want to get rid of this gap. While we're moving it up, we want to make sure that this front piece goes under the console this one's a little further down so but we still want to make sure as we move it forward that it does go behind it all right so we slide the console up and that's just about all the way in place right there i don't know if i can do this one-handed once your console is in place, you can rotate this item up. Click into place. All right, there we go. Now that we've got the console in place up front, I want to keep it from moving. So I'm going to reinstall the bracket and the mounting bracket for the uh, armrest. That, that'll hold it in place. All right, that one goes in first. The bracket's a little trickier. You may have to lift the rear up just a little bit just to get that over that stud, no big deal. And there we go, and that's how we mount. All right, I've tightened those down, but I will not put this in until the last. This is an easy thing to install. Let the break down a little bit, and you could just push this in, it just snaps right in. But I don't want to have to pull it back out just in case I have to redo something. So I'm leaving this till one of the last items. We're going to start with all the items up front next. I've had the I had these tucked for the install of the uh, console. These are the cables that go to the back of the climate control module. So we're going. To, this is the climate control unit. Our cable will snap be pushed down into this, snapped into position. The ball will need to go under here, so before before we install it, we want it pushed in. Then we can pull it out and 
this adjustment cable or rod or whatever you want to call this thing. I really don't even know what to refer to this as. It goes into this unit here on the back of the climate control module. Don't forget it. So you've got five things to hook up. We're going to do that now. Kind of figured out something. I want to... I extended this so I can thread it through the little arch there as I slide this in. I'm doing it one-handed, so I'm just doing some twisting here. But it's through there, and it kind of guides that cable into the, into the place it needs to be. So that helped out. All right, we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need two hands. And looky there. The little hook is over top of the cable, holding it in place. And we're below the arch. Good deal. Now we just need to, I'm reaching underneath here. There we go. All right, to get that ball back in, what you have to do is, or what I did was, I, I held it from, held that lever, because you can knock it loose, you can damage it, so you need to hold it. And then I tried pressing it down with several assorted items, until finally I just reached my thumb down in there and just pushed it in with my thumb, and it worked. Luckily, there is some access from underneath. So, I think what we can do is put our cables in first, our electrical cables in first, and then do this after the fact. And these are, these are what I'm talking about, these three connectors. All right, let me put these in. All right, I've got all those clicked into place. Don't forget... Lock them in. I think this is a cuticle pusher. I stole it from my wife. Don't tell her. She doesn't watch these videos. This control unit has, or this uh, climate control console has four spring retainers. They're just plastic on all, off on both, both sides. You have to push those in to get this in. So I'm going to slide that in a little bit. And then I'm going to reach up underneath it and try to get my cable. And I'm doing this completely by feel. Alright, got the climate control console in, all connected. Now I'm going to use the four screws. Two, three, four. And uh, secure it in place. The upper console on. One ten courtesy outlet, and the this the ignition plug is actually horizontal and goes forward into it. See, there's the connector. I said it went straight forward, but it did not. It actually went at a little bit of an angle. Let's see if we can try that. You see, these have to go in there. This harness has to go in the middle hole here. This harness has to come over the top of this. And then there's two clips here that will clip on up there. So uh, let's slide this in and get everything in place before we start pushing. It's just clipped in place. Let's put the two screws back in that go in. Okay, now the gear shift. Put it on. Slide it down. First thing to do is get it in place. Alright, 
So this snaps in place, then you just take the ring as best you can and slide it over top of it. All right, got the ring up there. Just gonna take my channel off. There, gotta keep that from coming off. I'm gonna plug up my harness. And this will just snap in place. Then we've got to get this back on that shaft right there. To reconnect the linkage, I've lifted it up with a small screwdriver. And then what I'm going to do is you can see that the, sh the shaft that it needs to go on is up above it. So I'm going to use the screwdriver to push that shaft down into the slot and then it should uh, catch and I can pull my screwdriver out. Then I used my screwdriver to push the shaft down until it went down far enough and pushed my tool out essentially. Reinstall this fancy dancy clip. Yeah. There you go. Now. Yeah. Put it back in park. We'll put the faceplate back on. Gotta hook up the connectors on. Once you get the connectors on, push it in place. That's in place just fine. Here seems to have went to what together pretty well. I think we can go ahead and put the uh, gear shift boot in. Big tab here. Stick it in, and then just push down on the rest of it. Pops right in place. All right, and this just sits in there relatively easy. No muss, no fuss. Got my screw in. Got my nut on. My plate. Goes back over this. Just snaps into place. Uh, this is all the way up. Let me try to get that back down to a reasonable, reasonable position. And then there's my armrest. So now I have cup holders. Isn't that fantastic? Everything's reinstalled. All right, we're going to put the seat back in. So this is the driver's side. We've got this little vent cover apparatus here. And basically, what happens is these clips slide over the, these two brackets. So... And in the bottom, I should point that out to you, the bottom just clips onto the front lip of this thing here. So there we go. that's in place now. All right, now that we've got all the bolts removed, take the harness here, put it through here. Oh, sorry, just going to tuck it into there. Just a moment. We're gonna take the anchor here, push it, clip it in the hole. First one goes here. Push that in. Oh, sorry. Push that in. And then the other one. Push that in. And push the clip in. I'm not watching the phone. I'm watching the. And then that one just clips in. So there you go. On the driver's seat, next to the console, we have this ear that goes in the slot there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Got it to drop in. Just have to manually manipulate, manipulate the seat. Then we're going to start a bolt by hand. Now over here on the outboard side, next to the door, Push the seat a little bit and get these bolt holes to line up. Drop that bolt in there. Alright. 
Now that that's in, run the seat forward and we're going to put in the two rear bolts. There we go. And then over here, next to the center console, this one is lined up. So let's start that in there. All right, then we've got to tighten those up. Uh, the spec on these is probably somewhere between 30 to 40 foot pounds. It's not a lot. All right. So here we go. Same thing for the passenger side. We're going to run the cable through the hole that they've provided and then we're going to plug them up. FYI, that little notch there should go up there, go up in between here. All right, we're using the same tool, the M10 serrated or spline bit. It's got 12 points, unlike a six point torque, and we're using a 13 millimeter socket to hold it and the impact to drive it in. All right, let's do that. All right, now that everything is back together, we need to put the negative plug, work that down all the way on that post because that post is tapered a bit. Got my 10 millimeter here. And uh, close that back. All right. Everything's back together tight. There you go. That's the way I did it. Hit like and subscribe. Helps me out. I don't get money. But I do get uh, higher up on the results list.